फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन जीरो प्लस फाइव सेकेंड Lift off normal. Here tracking. we have a majestic lift off of LVM 3 M4 rocket carrying India's prestigious Chandrayaan 3 spacecraft. I don't think anybody who is here can forget this moment because we just saw the launch of Chandrayaan 3, India's third lunar moon mission. As you can see behind me, you can see the you can see the flames flames of what just happened right now. You can see the media persons around. all of us who have been waiting for this moment waiting for this for the launch of chandrayaan 3 it has just taken place here at the sadish dhawan uh, space center at three harikota all eyes were on it everybody as applause as soon as the as the as the chandrayaan uh, as was launched hi this is the news minute and we are here live from the sadish dhawan space center at three harikota and i am joined by mr chetan kumar who is a journalist with times of india who has been covering space and technology for over the last 13 to 14 years chetan thank you for joining the news minute firstly a lot of people have this doubt why chandrayaan why is the moon why is the moon the destination for all these countries like india didn't but the past also us china and soviet union has done it so what is the speciality about this moon you see indians and humans have for long romanticized moon you know it's there in our folklore it's there in our love poems and everywhere but why the moon is fascinating for the scientific community is because there is a widespread belief based on you know uh, research that has happened over several years that to understand the evolution of the solar system it is very critical to understand how the moon evolved and the fact that it is uh, the closest celestial body or cosmic body to earth gives us access to moon far more easily than Uh, let's say if you have to study mars or venus which are far more complex missions to do and understanding moon the hope is that it will help find signatures of life you know and similar habitable planets where the solar system has other places where you can find life there's a lot of i mean a lot of it sounds like science fiction now but it, all the research is moving in that direction so which is why the moon assumes importance so far as space programs are concerned and in the last few years there is this renewed global interest also you see multiple missions being planned so that is the significance of moon so a uh, chandrayaan 3 primarily aims to land on the south on the south pole of the lunar surface right so uh, why the southern pole uh, specifically you see uh, chandrayaan 3 will not be landing at the south pole it will be landing in the, uh, in the in the region of the south pole about 70 degrees south but if you go back and remember what happened with chandrayaan 1 when uh, instruments being carried on chandrayaan 1 discovered water molecules or water ice in 2009 the mission was launched in 2008 so uh, from that time what is being understood is that the chances of water molecules being present in quantities that are observable are greater in regions of the moon that does not uh, get enough sunlight and the southern uh, uh, pole region is one of those places where it gives you uh, the ideal situation where you get a little sun for your instruments to work but it also has a lot of these craters which have permanently uh, not had light which can be studied to understand if there is water so that is one of the reasons i think in the future when there are uh, better technologies and isro masters those kind of technologies the plan is also to go to the dark side of the moon but as of now this is i think the primary reason for choosing the southern uh, lunar pole you know uh, isro chairman uh, s somnath said that the chandrayaan 3 design is based on a failed failed it's based on a failed mission right so what does this this mean is does it have anything to do with the chandrayaan 2 what happened to chandrayaan 2 see in, in uh, space is a very very uh, unforgiving sector with nearly zero margins for error right and there are a lot of unknown unknowns when you're landing something on another planet or in this case another celestial body you don't know the number of things you don't know so there are a lot of challenges but what isro has as an advantage with chandrayaan 3 is that a lot of things that it didn't know it now knows because it tried landing chandrayaan 2 and it, although it didn't succeed it now has an understanding of what may have gone wrong with chandrayaan 2 so here they're working backwards as they say so a lot of work has gone into improving uh, systems and subsystems on chandrayaan 3 especially the lander 
uh, you you we've been reporting and you also heard somnath talk, talk about this the legs of the lander have been strengthened it has uh, its velocity tolerance has been increased through 3 meters per second from 2 meters there are additional sensors added to measure velocity the solar panel surface has increased so there's a whole lot of improvements on vikram and also in terms of algorithms that have been written software that has been uh, developed there are multiple changes adding more redundancies and uh, that is what is giving ISRO the confidence that it would be able to soft land Vikram this time right. without a glitch. And the soft landing this time is scheduled to take place on August 23rd, right? And is there a possibility of a delay? Uh, and, and if there is, what could, what could be the possibilities that would ensure a delay in this? See, as of the plans for yesterday, all the calculations done as of yesterday morning, the landing should happen at about 5.47 p.m. on August 23rd. Right, and this is uh, all dependent on the entire mission profile working exactly as planned. That will start with uh, the GSLV or LVM3 launch today, which is barely about 40 minutes away. So this has to launch as planned, and the spacecraft has to get injected into an orbit that has been predetermined, that is 36,500 into 170. And from there, every phase of the mission has to go exactly as planned. And then the landing will happen on, uh, I mean, will be attempted on, August 23rd. Mm. So why August 23rd is because ISRO is planning to land or the idea is to land on the first day of sunrise on moon so that uh, both the lander and rover get 14 full days to carry out experiments. So if the landing is attempted and there is a failure, which ISRO is hoping is not the case this time, then there's no possibility of recovering anything and then the mission ends and we've lost the lander for the second time. But if there are uh, if landing is not conducive, if, if they find that some more maneuvers need to be carried out on 23rd and it gets pushed beyond 24th, then maybe they'll wait, go around moon for a little longer and then attempt landing when, uh, see these 14 days will go of the day and then you'll have to wait for the night period to end, so which is why it will be one month later, so it could happen in towards the end of September. And uh, going forward, how how impactful or how important is Chandrayaan-3 mission for Indian space missions, for the Indian space race? See, for space race, I don't know, it's not a word that uh, yeah, ISRO is usually say. associated with. Yeah. Uh, and space, even otherwise, is, is a sector that, you know, has seen a lot of collaboration even between countries that are sparring with each other. Yeah. The US and Russians have collaborated, yeah. you know. But the whole space program across the world kicked off with the space race and I understand why you're asking that. Yeah. But uh, for ISRO, see, the priority for the first few decades was different. Until 93, ISRO didn't do anything commercial. It stuck to uh, projects that, as Vikram Sarabhai had en you know, en envisioned, that would help the last man of the country. The idea was to bridge gaps in the society using space technology. And from there, it started doing uh, commercial launches and slowly uh, science missions. It started with Chandrayaan-1, then you had the Astrosat and the uh, mission to Mars, and now Chandrayaan-2, and Aditya is being planned to the Sun. So all of this uh, is putting ISRO in, in a place in the global uh, space uh, you know, uh, ecosystem where it can rub shoulders with some of the best. ISRO is no longer uh, uh, an agency or India is no longer a player which is you know seeking help from somebody. You are able to uh, partner in equal terms with countries like the US. There is a joint uh, satellite program for, called NISAR where India and US are partnering and India is in talks with Japan. So this mission in a lot of ways will uh, will determine or will have an impact on how ISRO's further you know, uh, science exploration missions moves forward.